Hi, Carol Undy here. Before I get into today's lesson and tips, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that I do have a website and I'll just bring that up now. Okay, so here we are at my website and I have a club which is free to join. So if you want to become a member and interact with other digitizers using the Benina software um, or if you want to hear the latest news I have about classes and lessons I'm holding, um, it's a good idea to pop over here and join. I'll put a link to the club to the home page in the description below um, and all you do when you get here is click on the learn more under Benina Digitizers Club and that will take you to the plan and you can join now um, you have to choose a plan but if you click the join now it'll take you to the only plan I've got which is the free membership plan um, you will get the odd um, email about new things that are happening but there's also a whole um, community there with different topics you can subscribe to or unsubscribe from and um, become involved and no ads for no external ads on the forum so that's a, a bonus plus okay let's get rid of that and let's get right into the lesson for today okay today I'm going to talk about um, tweaking your design after your first test so and in particular um, when pull compensation isn't enough um, but I will also have a quick look at stitch angles and other things you can do to improve your embroidery okay so here I have a first photo of my first stitch out of my little bunny that I digitized and you can see um, if I look closely here zoom in you can see down here that there is some gapping between the outline and down here in the body there's some extreme gapping and if you look closely you can see that the angle of the stitching is on the face is going horizontal and that is the direction that it's pulling in um, on the body the direction of the stitching is at a 45 degree angle the default 45 degree angle but you can also see that this particular part here is quite long now this design is quite large um, and in all honesty I would not normally digitize objects so big anyway for a fill stitch because this is the problem you get outline designs are hard enough as it is um, but if you, the bigger areas you have the more pull there is I haven't got the back end of the rabbit but that left hand side seemed oh there was some slight gapping down the left hand side too so um, gapping in this direction because I had a decent amount of overlap here um, under the face it didn't cause a problem there but there is a tiny or is that a white stitch it could be a white a uh, bit of a um, Bob and Phil come up there I think okay so let's start by talking about this pull compensation issue now I'll just minimize that photo for a moment and I've got here my two digitized rabbits um, this is the first one I did before and th so this is the one I used for that stitch out so let's zoom in and you can see that I've actually digitized it with a little bit of pull compensation added already the stitches do protrude past the outline if I select this object here the body object and I right click and go to the object properties and go to the effects and others and you can see I already increased the pull compensation to 0.35 so 0.2 is the default um, 0.35 wasn't enough obviously and because of that really large gapping that was down oh undo that because I just moved an object um, because of that really large gapping down here I don't think that even going to 0.4 was going to help um, I did use a decent stabilizer so uh, the stabilizer was not the issue here it is definitely the pull compensation from the large area of stitching I'll just close that um, 
So, what I did was, in my second rendition, and here it is here, I've actually reshaped the body to protrude even further. So what I did was I took my photo and, well, I took my embroidery and I measured this gap here and it was two millimetres across here um, that it was short. So then I went into the software, I'll just minimise that again, and I extended this shape so if I select that body shape it is no oh this one's grouped I'll just ungroup it okay so I select that body shape and go to the reshape tool you can see that I've come quite a way out past the outline now it's important not to move the outline because the outline well I used the outline tool so the outline is actually on the digitizing line of the graphic um, of where I want it to finish up uh, and because it stitches last, what happens is this body stitches, it pulls right in um, with the stitching and then your outline stitches and you end up with a gap. However, if you stitch, if you extend the extra amount you need to um, compensate for that in your actual digitizing, so you can see my digitizing line down here, it wasn't an issue, so I kept my digitizing line for the body shape on the outline um, but up here I brought my nodes out gradually to get my two millimeter extra here on the face I didn't need to reshape so much so if I select the face I did have a little bit of an issue of gapping remember from the photo but what I did with the face was I did increase the pull compensation I believe to four let me just check that and object properties and we'll go to the effects others oh here we are in um, pull compensation yes I have increased that to four so that was the maximum pull compensation and that was enough to deal with the slight gap I had with the face so that's what you can do if you do need to have a big area of fill stitch you can um, use your reshape tool to compensate for any pull compensation and that's why we do a test so and that's why we digitize because if we had purchased this design it would be very hard to edit that shape um, just the way when you load a design in it doesn't always come in as a solid shape the software's got to interpret the machine file and decide if it is a solid shape and you might get several different shapes here so editing this with a machine file is difficult but if you create your own files you can do as much editing as you like now a couple of other changes I made was I had my now these are mistakes that we shouldn't be making um, but I had my nose fill um, satin fill going in the same direction as my face fill horizontal and of course that resulted if I bring the photo back up that resulted in this very um, ragged edge because the stitches were embedding in with the um, fill stitch underneath I didn't put any underlay under it at all because I already had an underlay and a fill stitch so I didn't want, um, put any underlay but in hindsight a, an edge walk underlay would have made this a little bit better but still it's not a good idea to have the stitches running in the same angle if you're stitching on top of another stitch I also decided I didn't like this little bit of red under the nose so I took that out the mouth I reshaped slightly because it was a bit uneven and I w it was the stitching in the right direction but the eyes were stitching horizontally as well so I had the same issue there with the eyes shrinking in and getting embedded in the stitching. The other issue I had was that um, these whiskers um, there are jump stitches between the whiskers I had a double run so it stitched out to there and back again and then it jumped to here and stitched out and back again some of these jumps were too small to force them force um, 
tie-offs in the digitising. So this one here, I couldn't trim it because there was no tie-off between these two lots. It just jumped across and stitched this one and no tie-in on the next one. So that wouldn't have been able to be trimmed and that annoyed me a bit. So in the next... Um, picture if I zoom back out again I should be able to go to the next picture here's a picture of me the um, improved one where I got oh, I probably could have added a little bit extra on the side of the face here um, in hindsight after doing this is with the four millimeter um, pull compensation added but I could have um, actually reshaped this side a little bit interestingly the other side's really good now even though it's horizontal but you can see here where I've reshaped the mouth a bit and I've taken out that bit of red under the nose and I've changed the direction of the stitching of the nose and if I go to that I'll find the right nose here it will be this one no must be this one no that's that one must be this one it's zoomed out. There we go. <laughs> if I go to the object properties of that one, I think we'll find that in the effects underlay, I have actually got an edge walk underlay under that. So that makes the satin edge a little bit crisper, in the f um, which you'll notice in the photo. And same with the eyes up here. I made them vertical as well and put an edge walk underlay under those to keep that shape in the oval shape um, okay so the resulting stitch out was this so the eyes are much clearer as you can see the nose is much clearer and i moved the tie-ins and tie-offs so i moved the start and ends of these whiskers out to the end now I wasn't happy with that either um, because it tied in stitched in and out and tied off and then jumped so I could trim the jump stitches between each whisker but I didn't like this lump on the end so I went back to having the tie ends and uh, the sorry the start and ends on the face end but what I did was I changed the stitch order so if I go to my object properties sorry my color film and let's get down to the whiskers all right here we go oh well i can't show you here because i didn't do it on this um, design so that was a bit of a waste of time showing you that but what i envisage doing in the next iteration of this design would be to have the start and ends on the face end but to change the stitch order so that this one will stitch first and then jump over and stitch this one and zigzag back and forth that will force the machine to tie in and tie off in the at at the beginning of each of these whiskers and that means that I can just trim my jumps or the machine will trim with that long distance um, without any fear of anything unraveling and it will it will give a slight little lump like the other one did but on the face end which will look more natural so there's just some tips that you should look out for when you are digitizing and I hope that you've found them useful.